Hey guys, it's Hank from Sprues and Brews, and today we're gonna to be doing an unboxing video of this guy. This is a 135 kit from Polish manufacturer IBG Models, and this is their brand new tool 2021 release of their 7TP Polish tank with single turret. This kit was actually a gift from a good friend of the channel who just went home to visit friends and family in Poland and was nice enough to bring back this kit for me to check out. Mirek is a very talented figure painter. He runs Battle Bear Miniatures, and does a lot of wargaming miniatures. So Marvel Crisis Protocol, D&D, Star Wars Legion, even some 172 scale armor kits. I'll leave a link in the description below to his Instagram. Go check him out, give him a follow, say hey, tell him I sent you. He's an awesome dude. So thanks again, Medek, this is gonna be fun. In addition, he brought me something extra. This is Sprues and Brews, of course. So if you stick around to the end of the video, we'll crack this guy open too. All right, so we're gonna start with a little historical context of the vehicle itself, and then we'll crack the box open, see what's in there. Let's check it out. All right, so as I mentioned in the intro, before we get into the model kit itself, let's just talk about the background of this vehicle a little bit. The 7TP was first built in Poland in 1935 as an improvement of the licensed British Vickers 6-ton Mark E tank. The Polish army really knocked out an impressive vehicle here. The 7TP, which stands for 7-ton Polish, was actually one of the most advanced tanks in the world at the time of its production. The 7TP featured an inline 6 four-stroke diesel engine, which made it one of the first operational diesel-powered tanks anywhere in the world at the time, and this thing could rattle along at nearly 25 miles an hour with a range of almost 100 miles. It had a very effective leaf spring suspension system, similar to many of its now more famous German contemporaries, and it was armed with a 37mm Bofors WZ-37 for the main gun, and a 7.92mm CKM machine gun in the coax position in the turret. Some 7TPs were also built with a dual turret setup, with each carrying a 7.92 CKM, but most of these were converted to the more effective single turret prior to the outbreak of World War II. The vehicle had a crew of three, a commander, a gunner, and a driver, which was also common at this stage of tank development. The 7TP was the main tank used in the defense of Poland during the German invasion in September of 1939, and actually fared pretty well against the relatively light German tanks that made up the Panzer divisions during the Blitzkrieg. Reportedly, the 37mm Bofors of the 7TP could penetrate any German tank at the time, including the relatively limited short-barreled Panzer IVs, but this thing could and did make quick work of Panzer 1s and 2s that it came up against. The ultimate downfall of the 7TP was a result of overwhelming odds. Only 150 of these or so were made, and despite its technical superiority, there just weren't enough of them to stop the onslaught of German armor. All in all, an impressive little guy that wouldn't have been so little back in 1939. This thing was a pretty solid tank. All right, with all that said, let's crack into the kit and see what we're working with here. This is the first time I've had one of these IBG kits, so I'm really excited to see the tooling and engineering. The company operates out of Poland and first started distributing their own kits back in 2008. They still have a pretty limited run of products, but there are some really cool sets and unique subjects that you don't find too often. I'll leave a link to their site in the description below as well if you'd like to check them out. Right off the bat here, beautiful box art. This is a gorgeous picture of the 7TP and the, the heat of the action, so super impressed with that. As I mentioned in the intro, this is a full interior kit, so we get some awesome shots on the side here of a fully built, unpainted model with some of the open hatch options. We can see the full interior on the right there. Very excited about this. And if we flip up to the top of the box, we've got some mock-ups of the camouflage scheme. Really excited about this too. This is a unique scheme. You don't see a lot of browns in the kind of armor that I usually do in German or American armor. So excited to do this kind of disruptive geometric pattern. Opening the box, we're greeted with a whole pile of sprues here. Everybody wrapped in some individual plastic, which is great to see. This looks to be all of the ammunition. Yeah, yeah it is. All the 37 millimeter ammunition. There's a ton of those in there. I wonder how many that's gonna be. And it looks like we've got our running gear here and some link and length tracks. I'll open all these baggies after we check out the instruction manual and go through all the individual sprues, so stay tuned. Next, it looks like we've got the clear pieces here, some of the headlights. This sprue appears to have some of the engine components. I see a serpentine belt on there and some of the engine block. So that's gonna be most of the guts, it seems like. 
here it looks like some of the other components of the interior, some smaller parts. I see the turret ring there, so that is very nice. Impressed with the molding already. Oh, here's our turret. Very well protected on this sprue, happy about that. And the rivet detail on there looks great. We'll check that out in a minute. And then we've got most of the hull here. So we don't have that traditional to me, a bathtub hull. It's separate pieces, which is good. So hopefully the engineering is nice there so we don't have any problems with fit. And then here we've got the decals and a whole bunch of photo etch. I honestly, I don't do a ton of photo etch work. So this is gonna be a real challenge for me, but should add some super nice detail to the kit. So that's great. All right, let's check out our instruction manual here. So we've got some beautiful color images right off the bat. Over on the left here, we have our sprue count. So it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 sprues. This is a big boy. Whew. And if we jump over to the right here, we've got a nice color guide for the interior. Obviously, we're gonna have to paint that up first before we seal the whole tank up. We've got the engine block on the right, the ready racks, the turret, some radio components. This is great, really excited about this. And we've got a color guide on the bottom there for a bunch of different brands. We've got AK, Vallejo, some of the usual suspects. So that's gonna be helpful. I usually use ammo MIG paints though, so I'm gonna have to do a little conversion action. Let's look at the actual steps here. Looks like we're gonna start out with our engine block, that inline six diesel. Gonna knock that guy out. A lot of components here. Looks like the first 10 steps or so are all the engine. We're gonna start working on the hull here around steps seven and eight. There's that serpentine belt we talked about. Got the drive shaft running up to the front of the vehicle. Very detailed here on the interior, but you know, it's an early war tank, so relatively simple on the inside. So this will be a nice, nice intro to interior work for me. Got the controls in the front there. Here's our big old transmission block. Gonna tie that into the drive shaft. That'll be nice. Put that into the hull. Looks like we put the second side of the hull on here around step 16. Oy, this is gonna be quite an undertaking. Here's the ready rack with, how many shells do we have? 80 37 millimeter shells. Oh, that's gonna be quite a project to snip and sand all those, but it's a beautiful ready rack. Looks like a photo etch ready rack, so that's gonna be cool. This thing had a lot of, a lot of ammunition. Whee. All right. Next, it looks like we're gonna put, is that the, yeah, the rear of the hull on there and then start putting some of the hull roof components on. We're on step 20 now. Starting to button up the vehicle. Put in the opening for our turret ring. Then we're gonna start working on some exterior here. Looks like we're gonna start making drive sprockets, running gear, road wheels, the works. Here's our leaf spring suspension. Gotta knock all those individual components out. Gonna mount those on the vehicle around step 26. Oh, getting in deep here. Return rollers, road wheels. We got Lincoln length track here. Looks like two big lengths and then a bunch of individual links around the drive sprocket. Put our wheel wells on with some photo etch detail there, very nice. All of our pioneering tools around step 32. A little more photo etch. Some more of our pioneering tools, external boxes and stowage. Looks like here by step 35, we're moving on to the turret. This is the turret ring. Looks like the gunner or commander's seat there. Turret controls. This thing's very detailed, impressive. Here's the breach for our 37 millimeter bofers. Oh, and look at all the detail there on the coax, the MG, that's beautiful. I'm gonna have to find a way to display this so it's not all concealed at the end because this is gonna be really nice. Put on the barrel and the shroud there for the coax. More turret ring work. Here's the turret itself. And look at that beautiful little bustle on the back for the radio, that's nice, okay. Here's the roof of our turret attaching the main cannon to the turret itself. Oh, we're getting to the end. Yep, attaching that turret ring to the turret itself. You can position the hatch either open or closed. That is nice, I think we'll do open. And then finally putting the turret into the hull. Nice, all right, and we got some color guides here. I believe there are two schemes with this vehicle. Got those browns and tans and greens in here, very nice. 
Yep, and then we've got one more here. Not sure which one I'll do. I'll have to do a little research on the units. Talk to Merrick, see what he can recommend for me. Yeah, that's an impressive book. There are a lot of steps. This is gonna be a beast. All right, let's check out the sprues again. Here we have sprue A. This is most of our hull assembly. As we mentioned before, beautiful rivet detail on there. That's great. This is gonna look great when it's painted up. I love an external like raised rivet like that because you can really weather them well. Get some grime around the, the rivet heads there. Some vents on the back of the engine deck, I'd imagine. Very nice. Sprue B we have here, sprue B. This is the engine block. Some of the drive components there. Drive shaft, yep. Beautiful detail here, really impressed by these guys. This is gonna be a fun kit. Next we have sprue C. More of our engine components. Very nice. This is sprue F. Not all in order here. This is sprue F, but yeah, this looks like the top of our turret here. We can see that. Again, more beautiful external details. We've got the turret ring. Some of the, the gun breech components there. Looks like we've got our spare shell basket, ejected shell basket there for inside the turret. That's gonna be nice. This is sprue G. Looks like the shroud for our exhaust and I believe that's the front of the hull, upper glasses plate. Just a few pieces on there. Here we've got a, a dual sprue. So this is sprue P, and this is all of our road wheel, drive sprocket, idler components here. Got the leaf springs on the top, you can see those, very nice. Another double sprue, this is sprue O. This is all of our tracks, a little stuck together here. Somebody's, who's twisted? Come on, there you go, all right, cool. Yep, we've got our two linked lengths. We've got a long one, I believe that is gonna be for the top, and then the shorter one will be on the bottom, because it's got it kind of got that inverted. Um, what shape would that be? I don't even know. I'm gonna brush up on my geometry. Nice sag in there, though, built in. That's beautiful, good molding. Okay, cool. Lots of individual links. That's gonna be a fun little challenge on its own. Here is our turret, sprue J. As I mentioned in the beginning, nicely protected there. Beautiful detail on the outside. I like that they cast this all in one piece. That'll be great just to help with fit because there's a lot of components that have to fit in that very small turret ring. The, you know, the commander's gunner seats and all that jazz. So good that they're in there in a nice protected shell. Sprue M, not gonna open this up because I don't want these to get scratched up in the box before I start building this. And then we're getting down to the end here. Got another double sprue. This is sprue K. These are all of our shells, as we mentioned in the beginning. We've got 80, 37 millimeter shells there. They're really nice molds though, actually. Those are great, gonna have to clean those up. And then we've got ammo cases for the coax on the side there. I think I saw in the instruction manual that those all rest on top of the ready rack. This thing was loaded down with a lot of ammunition. These guys are gonna be ready to rock and roll. All right, and then last, we'll just take a peek at the photo etch sheet here. A lot of components. This is gonna be a challenge. This is this will be the hardest part of the build for me because like I said, I don't do a ton of photo etch work, so I'm just gonna have to be really careful here. I know it adds a ton of details. So I'm excited, this will be a fun challenge to take on. All right, yeah, so that's it. That's everything that comes with this kit. Super, super excited about this one. It's gonna be a blast. Thanks again, Medek, for the gift here. Now, before we end this video, let's check out that beer. I'm excited, it's gonna be a good one. All right, guys, let's check out this brew. We've got a Rowing Jack IPA, my personal favorite, from Albrowar Brewery. This is in Libork, Poland. I just had to look that up. I did not know off the top of my head, so Merrick, you can give me crap later. It is a 6.2 ABV, which is, is perfect, honestly. That's a nice drink in IPA. It's not too heavy, but this is a big boy, so drink responsibly. Obviously, this is okay, guys. I am a grown adult. I know what I'm doing, so be smart. Hopheads of Poland, that is absolutely beautiful i love that it's really funny at santa maria's stern finally a beer that will not go off on the way to india only an extra portion of hops could protect this precious cargo against the moods of neptune and the burning sun try to resist sailor i won't i'm just gonna drink it 
I love this graph. Bitterness, malt, and power. Mok. I don't know the rest of these Polish words. I'm, I'm not going to butcher those. Maybe you're going to have to teach me how to say these all later. And I love this guy on the front. He's got an oar for a hand. You know, life's been tough, but at least he's got this brew. And you know what? It's time to open this up. Get rid of that no touch sign. Let's crack this thing open. Check it out. All right, guys, it's time to try this thing out. Let's get the trusty Swiss Army bottle opener. Ready to rock and roll there. Oh, <laughs> this is gonna be good. All right. Nice pale color right off the bat there. I do like a good hazy creamy IPA, but you know what? The classics, like I love a Sierra Nevada or Lagunitas, and this is giving me those same amber vibes. I'm stoked. It smells so good. Oh yeah, that's a solid beer. Hmm, it's got an interesting little fruity thing going on in the back there. This is good, oh, this is good. Right off the bat, guys. Thumbs up. Yeah, I'm just gonna end the video and enjoy the rest of this. This is delicious. So, <laughs> again, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, if you liked the video, you got something out of it, please make sure you hit that like button. It really helps me grow the channel. As I said before, I'll put a link to the model website down below, as well as a link to Merrick's Instagram page. Check it out. Merrick, again, thank you. This was great. Thanks for sponsoring the video. Really appreciate it. Um, until next time, guys, be well. Take it easy. Happy building. Cheers. Oh, boy.